to Wednesday's racing news. Another sad day for racing for the second time this week. We've lost one of our real genuine friends in racing, Michael Jarvis, after a long illness has died at the age of 73 and really no one would have a word said against him. He was an excellent trainer, trained loads of top quality winners, Carroll House winning the Ark, Rakti winning uh, several big races and the list would be absolutely endless. Well, a man who was uh, uh, with him for a long time as assistant trainer and now trains at Kremlin House is Roger Vary. I'm delighted to say that, that Roger is with us on this sad day. Good morning, Roger. Hi, Robert. It is a sad day and reading the papers today, I mean, no one literally, it was not one bad word anyone would ever say about him saying what a charming man he was and such an excellent trainer. That's right, Robert. It was, um, of course, a very sad day yesterday, and it will be a, it will be a sad time for, for you know, for many weeks and months to come. For, you know, everyone here involved at Kremlin House, and of course, Michael's family and, and, and friends. Um, but I've not read, uh, I've not read the paper fully yet this morning. But uh, the little snippets I've read, it's, it's really. Um, touching and, and wonderful to read some of the nice things that people have said about Michael. No, it most, it most certainly is. I mean, you obviously knew him uh, better than most professionally and probably as a friend as well. What were the qualities of the man? He just seemed to be part of the qualities you need as a trainer, his patience to take the bad news and the good news with sort of, you know, equal aplomb. But what, what, what were the sort of qualities of the man as a trainer? He was un unbelievably unflappable, Robert. Um, he just maintained a, a level-headedness, um, you know, throughout the whole uh, the whole roller coaster ride of training racehorses. He, you know, the ups and the downs. He he, he enjoyed his successes, and um, you know, he took his disappointments and, and the downs of the game, you know, as graciously as as anyone possibly could. Um, I never forget. Uh, you know, he could walk out of the office and we could have had a disaster on the morning, either, you know, an injury to a good horse or, I don't know, something something as trivial as, you know, something not being declared when it should have or something, not that things like that happened often, but it didn't really seem to matter what was what was thrown at Michael. He was, um, he was just a human being. He understood uh, that some things happened out of your control and... You know, he didn't. He didn't let things, you know, upset him. Um, perhaps they did, but he didn't show it. And I think that was his. I think if, if a, you know, can can sort of convey that sort of attitude to life, and um, you know, that sort of spells down um, through the staff and perhaps even into the horses. You know, he was. He had a, a, a relaxed manner and a you know and a good nature, and of course he was he was a gentleman um, in every sense of the word. It sounds a, a great sort of lesson in life, that. And even when he had to stop training, he was still at the height of his powers. I mean, at the age of 70, he trained 100 winners for the first time in his career. So he, he, he never lost a touch of, of the art of training. He never did. And, um, you know, for, for him, I don't think there was ever any science to it. He, you know, it was something he'd done for a long time, and it was something he grew up um, doing as a teenager in his and, and into his 20s and of course he had a wonderful grounding um, as we know and uh, you know he really was um, you know a true example of someone who worked, worked his way up from the, from the bottom to the top and um, I don't think he missed one lesson along the way and uh, you know to him training racehorses was very much part of his um, it was part of his day-to-day -day routine and he did it very naturally. I didn't think he had to think too hard about it. I think um, everything he did, every decision he made, um, to a lot of us would be, um, you know, would be hard decisions. Um, possibly they were to Michael, but he never came across like they were. You know, he did everything incredibly naturally, and um, I suppose that was his gift. Well, thanks very much for talking to us, Roger. It's great to, to hear about the, the great man, Michael Jarvis. Thanks, and uh, we'll speak to you again soon. Okay, thank you, Robert. And as Roger was saying, there's some really excellent coverage of, of, of uh, Michael's career in the, in the Racing Post this morning, well worth reading. But uh, I'm afraid it's been a, a week of, of tributes with the earlier death earlier this week of, of Ginger McCain.
Anyway, let's uh, pay tribute now to uh, Michael Jarvis and some of the wonderful horses he trained. We'll see Carol House in action. And here, first of all, from the man who was stable jockey for many a year, Philip Robinson. At the end of the day, he was just all you can see. Very, very nice man. You know, it's, um, and I, in all the years that I've had anything to do with him or, or known of, I've never, ever heard anybody say a bad word. Mm about him so um, I mean that just for me sums it up he, like uh, most people say he was a gentleman um, and everybody knows he was an, not just a normal trainer he was an exceptional trainer mm. who was able to get the best out of horses and not just training them but um, in placing them you know which is an absolute fine art he had it down to you know we had a, a, a run of a few exceptional years and you know we also won the French Derby with Holden Court the Italian Derby with Morsi and, you know, and then Rackley came along. Mm. Um, we had a real purple run and it, it it was lovely to be there with him. Um, you know, he was, and he, and he, I think at the time we we enjoyed it and um, I'm pleased to have been to, to, to do it, you know. Michael was uh, a, a, a perfect horseman, a much respected figure, a man who quietly went about his business and operated one of the most successful stables that Newmarket has seen in the last 50 years. Uh, he was a man steeped in history. Uh, if you go back to the 60s, he led up the Derby winner, Charlottetown, uh, who was ridden by Sco Scobie Breasley in 1966. You see those famous black and white uh, films of, of that uh, uh, pre-race and also after the race for Michael Jarvis was the man leading him up. Uh, he then came and uh, joined the trainer's ranks. Uh, he was a, a private trainer for David Robinson, the uh, radio rentals man. Uh, he then branched out of course on, on his own and he became uh, an, an, absolute, uh, an absolute star in the training ranks. His uh, arc win with Carol House, of course, will always be remembered, ridden by Mick Canan and uh, winning there at Longchamp in that famous day in the late 80s. He was a trainer that it was impossible not to admire, um, both in the way that he conducted himself on the race course. I think everybody agreed what a, what a lovely man he was. He, he was reserved, friendly, shrewd, um, but also with the way his horses ran. And they were campaigned with every race in mind, sparingly. His percentage was always good. They were always in the right races. And he trained some really good horses over the years. And you could usually reckon that every season he would have a three-year-old or two that was going to make that huge improvement. A lot of them owned, of course, by Sheikh Ahmed Al Maktoum. He won an arc, but the the race that gave him the most pleasure was winning the 1,000 guineas with Amir at on his home terrain. The first year um, we had horses with Michael with Shekham Nam you know, was Ezwara and uh, she went on to win the Oaks and you know we, we formed a very good partnership straight away and um, it was you know very sad news and you know obviously uh, for us and our team you know we were very grateful for you know all the, the advice and fun that we had and uh, now with Roger He's very much, you know, passing it on, and I've been working closely with Roger, and you know, it's uh, it's part. He's still part of the team, and we do the things that he did, and and, and you know, his his genitive is going to carry on. It's sometimes overlooked just how important it is to have the relationship functioning between trainer and jockey. Uh, did Michael, or was he able to instill confidence into you? Was he able to? Did he have the, 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 the ability to, to give you the sort of information you'd need to, to carry out what you were doing? Yeah, I mean, you know, Michael, he had a great knowledge and he always had plans for all his horses, you know. And uh, he's the sort of man, he was, you know, he's very calm and made work mornings fun and it gave you a lot of confidence and uh, never really tied you down to, you know, strict orders and the horses are always, you know, beautifully turned out. So, you know, really, you know, my time with him was always fun you know uh, and obviously you know we were successful so it made it even better so as I said you know I mean it, he's obviously passed it on to Roger because um, it's becoming a very successful team already. And that tribute to uh, Michael Jarvis who died yesterday at the age of 73 ending with uh, with uh, Richard Hills who rode a, a lot of winners for him and our thoughts with uh, Michael's wife Gay and uh, his three daughters as well at this uh, very sad time.